In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins, we turn back to the Lord now, and we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed when the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and to all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. 
In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning those using the world as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets, Then he called them, so they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Their nets were everything. That's what they used to catch the fish. You know, they'd throw their nets over the side of the boat and and pull in a big catch, or they'd work together in a couple of boats and, and chase the fish into the nets and then pull them up. Their nets were everything. Uh, just kind of like how a fishing pole and some bait are pretty basic uh, you know, tools today if you want to go fishing. Their nets were everything. And so when Jesus told Simon and Andrew that they would be fishers of men, I imagine they wondered what they would be using uh, to catch all these men. Obviously, they weren't going to be using nets. Instead, they would be using bait, or we could say they were going to be using a lure. Uh, They would set aside their nets in favor of the lure we know as the gospel, the good news, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. And, you know, it's been such an effective lure over the centuries that it's the only one really in the church's tackle box. Uh, A few other lures have been tried, but the gospel is the only one that really uh, consistently works. And it works because the gospel presents to the human spirit what our spirit is looking for uh, at the most basic level. The gospel, the good news of the kingdom, is that there is more beyond simply birth, life, and death. There is more beyond temporary happiness and fleeting pleasures. There is more beyond everything that's bad and good in the world. The world is good, obviously. Life here is good. But there's even more to it than that, uh, than we can think or imagine. Uh, In short, the lure of the gospel is salvation, lasting life, true happiness, and certain hope for a better present and and a wonderful future. That's the lure of the gospel, this this promise. Now, when we listen to St. Paul here in his reading, uh, we we might, he might sound a little tense. You know, he says here that time is running out for the world in its present form and it's passing away. Time is running out. But but St. Paul really isn't overly tense here. Uh, He's actually quite excited. He himself has been caught by this lure and the promise of the good news. Uh, And not only that, he could see the good news, the gospel, starting to unfold. 
uh, the world in its present form was passing away, while at the same time something new and wonderful was coming into being. Uh, and so St. Paul here is actually rather excited. St. Paul, St. Peter, St. Andrew, and, and, and the rest of them were very successful fishers of men, partly because of their charisma, but mostly because of the lure they were using, the gospel, the good news, that the kingdom of God is at hand. It was here for those who wish to share in it. When I uh, think of the vocation to priesthood, uh, being a gospel-toting fisherman uh, is, is kind of near to the heart of the vocation. Not that the priest is out there, you know, preaching on stumps and street corners. Instead, it's more like what happens here at Mass. The Eucharist, the gift of God's uh, life and love and forgiveness, is presented to people with the invitation to take it, like a lure. Uh, and the words of Scripture in the Mass are also presented to people with the same invitation to hear it, to take it in. Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God is presented to people with the invitation to take it in, to share it. And it's a wonderful vision Jesus has. The kingdom isn't, you know, so much a place, perhaps, as it is an experience of life. Uh, and that experience is, is the setting of the kingdom. Uh, imagine a life where there isn't any condemnation, but, but simple forgiveness given at the drop of a hat. Imagine a life where there's actual cooperation and peace. A life where there is honesty, integrity. Uh, a life where your main job is to stop and to smell the roses. Imagine a life where, uh, even though we may not see the big picture, we don't live in fear or worry. Instead, we just live. Uh, imagine a life where we're never alone, where we're loved and cherished by our Creator and God, as well as our friends in Christ, and we know this love. And this, is, of course, is just this little smidgen of what the kingdom of God is. So the gospel, the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand for the taking uh, is a pretty good lure Jesus gave to Andrew and to Simon, J uh, James and John, Paul, and the entire church. But still, as we know, there are still plenty of people around today who never, who never uh, are attracted by that lure, and caught by it. Uh, sometimes uh, priests uh, and clergy get distracted from the heart of our vocation. We get pulled and we let ourselves be pulled. Uh, away by other things that keep us uh, busy. So sometimes it's a failure of the fishermen to use the right lure, and maybe that's why people don't, don't catch. Or sometimes the fishermen don't go fishing enough. Uh, they don't cast the lure out there enough for people to even see the lure. So that can be a problem. Well, some people, however, even if the lure comes their way, they themselves might be too distracted to notice. And of course, uh, that's only worsened by so much, uh, you know, social media and technology, which we let distract us from the lure of the gospel. And with some other people, it might simply be a lack of belief in the, in the lure. Yeah, they've heard the gospel message. Uh, they've heard all about the kingdom of God. They just don't buy it. For them, it's really a matter of hearing what Jesus says when he proclaimed to repent and believe in the gospel. That's a challenge for them. And there are any other number of reasons why the lure of the gospel uh, can fail to make a catch. We ourselves might not take the bait. Not to worry, though, not to worry, though. The Lord and the church uh, are pretty uh, persistent and patient uh, fishermen. The lure of the gospel, the lure of the kingdom of God being at hand, he's just going to float there. The lure isn't going anywhere. God waits patiently for us to approach the lure, the lure of everything that's good and true and beautiful. God waits for us. And of course, we can do what the fish do. You know, some fish, they swallow the lure whole and they just go with it. Other fish, they just sort of nibble at the lure. Uh, either way works. You know, if you're more a nibbler of the Lord's good news, that's fine. Next time, maybe take a little bit bigger nibble. Uh, and the next time, a, a little bit bigger one yet. Or if you're more like a fish who just takes the lure whole and, and, and goes with it, maybe the Lord is saying, come follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. Either way, the Lord and his church are going fishing. They're going fishing. And he has a pretty attractive lure, the kingdom of God, and its promise of abundant life, meaning, love, peace, and a whole lot more that can possibly fit into a little homily. The Lord's lure is hanging right there for the taking. What is our response to that lure that's hanging there? Not just today, but every day. What's our response to that promising lure of the gospel that the Lord dangles before us? We profess our faith. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And once again, we entrust our prayers to the Lord. For the church, her shepherds, leaders, and all the faithful, that we would find ever deeper joy in the good news of salvation and live in hope and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our country in this election year, that God would bless our political leaders with integrity, fortitude, and selflessness, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are dealing with cancer, chronic illness, and long-term health issues, that God would bring healing, especially of mind and soul. Let us pray to the Lord. For those being baptized this weekend, especially Claire Rose, that she would grow as a faithful friend and disciple of the Lord Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For the lost, the lonely, the forgotten, and the outcast, that they, that they would experience the Lord's friendship through our concern for them, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, for those on our prayer chain, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord, from the altar of our hearts today. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, including Jane Verbuman, that they would enjoy the glory of God's eternal kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, we ask you in your kindness and mercy to hear our prayers and to answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our prayers, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and David our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.